perfect. Thank you. If you really want enlightenment, then just lighten up. Hello, folks. Welcome to Paradigm Shift, an educational comedy. Um, we obviously have a DeviantArt account, and um, I tend to write uh, journals and stuff, blogs, whatever you want to call it. And there's so many of you that absolutely hate reading, and I can't say as I like, blame you one bit. Um, so this interface allows me to, you know, read it for you. And you can also follow along if you want, and, you know, you can see the title and everything. Um, I also intend on embedding this video in this journal entry, but of course I need to create the video first, so you're not going to see that particular version of it as in the screen cap here, because I can't time travel to the future, and, yeah, anyway. Um, so, okay, here we go. <clears throat> Rant, needing an epiphany? I am feeling so inspired. This morning a friend of mine told me the most wise things I've ever heard her say. Now, I'm not sure if she intended to phrase it this way or if it was a Freudian slip, but either way, it is fucking brilliant. The most absolute natural genius in this is so incredibly clear. Like a hammer striking me on the head as a moment of epiphany sets in. And here's what she said. You cannot help someone who wants to be helped. So, just trying and pursuing it is as annoying to them as it is to you. It is best to just stop because they will only get more and more frustrated and you will get nowhere. And notice the word I have enunciated in capitals is the word WANTS. Societal thinking creates cognitive dissonance because false logic asks the question, WANTS? Don't you mean you cannot help someone who does not want to be helped? So let's delete the frontal cortex clusterfuck and reveal the obvious hiding in plain sight. <coughs> I hate it that I can't disable the Facebook sounds. Fucking bastards. Anyway, moving on. Because we are human beings and not robots, everything is backed by a core belief system. We act in the direction of what we believe in, and we walk away from the things we don't. Anything you believe you cannot do, you absolutely will not, you know, experiment with any ideas about going about doing it. In fact, the mention of such experimentation will sound ridiculous to you. As if someone were insisting that if you flap your arms long enough, that you will eventually fly. The very notion is laughable in the best case and highly offensive in the worst case. Just as in order to feel the need for security, it requires a belief in its opposite, the lack of security. When we assume we are powerless, this is when we have this need for others to come in and play babysitter to us. You know, I told me that. <clears throat> anyway, inside joke. Google fence switch. <laughs> or YouTube it. Moving right along, Americans in present day believe they have a need for security. In the early days of America, this belief did not exist. They knew they were already secure. The people were confident, skilled, critical thinkers who were experts at their crafts and wielded their weapons with a force to be reckoned with. I mean, they knew that when it came time to kick ass and chew bubble gum, they were all out of gum. They had no doubts in their abilities to keep themselves secure, and thus knowing they already were secure, the need for security simply did not exist.
Benjamin Franklin warned us about this when he said if the need for temporary security is at the expense of liberty, then you deserve neither security nor liberty. He was warning us not to fall for the propaganda about the false need for security because all this perpetuates is a belief system that we are incapable of thinking for ourselves. And it's a trap that the banksters of his day wanted us to fall into and a trap that the bankers of our day have succeeded in snaring us with it. With that said, I think you can clearly see that when someone wants help that this wants requires a belief system that being helpless is the only real reality. If being helpless is the only real reality, then help cannot be truly wanted because the belief system is not there to support the idea of help being capable of being real. This is why when others offer help, the, the wiser of us decline it, and the more insecure of those wise people reflect, or excuse me, redirect their focus into hopelessness. When someone says they want help, what they are truly wanting is for you to validate their belief system that help isn't real and cannot exist. This way, they can also blame you and feel justified. If they blame you for their situation and then blame themselves for having accepted your help, then their egos can feel justified and thus their addiction to the maintaining of their beliefs at all costs is fulfilled and they can remain miserably satisfied within their comfort zones. This, you know, so this is um, also why when you wage war on something yeah this is also why when you wage war on something that which you wage war upon is empowered grows perpetuates and becomes stronger the war on drugs has led to record hydro problems the war on cancer has only seen more cancer as cures are repressed and treatments are encouraged because Treatments maximize profits for Big Pharma. The war on terror has only led to people feeling the most terrorized than they've ever been made in the whole frickin' known world history. People's paranoia is far more dangerous in this regard than any asshole with a box cutter knife on a plane. So, if when we want help, we are perpetuating a belief in and state of being thereof, the idea of being helpless, then if we want to step out of that hamster wheel, how then do we do so? Simple. Move into the direction of the idea that you already are sovereign. Sovereigns see everything as opportunity instead of burden. No, this does not mean that their likes and dislikes change. It means their likes are better appreciated and their dislikes merely become their right to have an opinion and not something which makes them feel disempowered, helpless, and debilitated. Lucky you, we're almost to the end here. Yes, I am a long-winded bastard. Sovereigns don't want help. They want cooperation, co-creation, mutually beneficial sharing. They want knowledge, understanding, multiple perspectives, contrasts, broader vision of life. They understand and respect and honor the time things take and the opportunities which are gifts embedded in the challenges they face. They value all experiences. They love what they love, and they hate what they hate, just as you do. They just view it from a different angle than you do. They know it is their right to their opinion. They know it's not something which must bend them over and make them its bitch. So, with that said then, you cannot help someone who wants 
help because they believe that help is impossible. The only type of person you can help is the one who doesn't want it because the whole idea of help in this context doesn't even exist. They are merely looking to connect and share with like-minded individuals. They know they are supportive and supported. There's no need to want that support because they already know they have it available. There is no doubt in their minds about it. There is a difference between group co-creation, between sovereigns, and group sync among sheeple. Well, guys, much love and sincere appreciation to that friend who bestowed upon me this morning's epiphany of wisdom. And best wishes to everyone reading this post. I will catch y'all later. Thank you for watching, reading, listening, whatever it is. I wonder how many views we've gotten. Let's reload this. Eight views right now. Let's let's reload. You just see what it is just for fun right quick. Before I end this. Thing. Just for fun, just for fun, just for fun. Already up to twelve. I posted this twenty-six minutes, fifty-two seconds ago. Alrighty, take care everybody. Have a good day, night, evening, morning, whatever it is for you. Catch you later. Thank you.